This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've had it for a week now, and I want to give you some painfully honest impressions about this phone having upgraded from an iPhone 13 Pro. Spoiler alert, it's still the same old iPhone. My first impressions of this phone were, wow, this feels great in my hands. It's lighter than I was expecting, and the rear glass has this great texture. It's hard to describe, as it feels smooth but somewhat grippy at the same time. The design hasn't really changed that much if I'm honest. The materials have been upgraded to titanium and it still has the signature camera array. But the notch I was used to is gone and now replaced with the same dynamic island that they introduced with the 14. But there is one huge change. That little switch we all used to flick to silence our phones is gone. It's been replaced with an action button. This button is similar to that on an Apple Watch Ultra a programmable button which you can set up to do a whole host of tasks. And if you're somewhat of a shortcuts wizard, you could probably get it to make you a cup of coffee. This button is new and very capable, but after one week of use, I've kept it on the silent function. Also, if you did not already know, there is one huge change which a lot of people are very happy about, and it is the ditching of the lightning port for USB-C. Thank you to the European Union for that. They really do look after us and do some wonderful things for us consumers. Having USB-C on the iPhone is great, it's one less cable to carry, enables faster data transfers, and it allows you to attach so many USB-C devices to your phone. But like all new things, it takes some time to get used to. I've been using the iPhone for years, and it's become so embedded in my brain that the lightning cable was the way to charge my phone for so long that just last week, I went out on a drone shoot for work and I completely forgot that this new phone was USB-C. Now that wouldn't normally be an issue if my drone had a remote with a built-in screen, but as my drone's remote uses my iPhone as the screen, it was a problem. Luckily, I had a spare USB-C cable tucked away in my camera bag, but that was the first instance of forgetting about this charging cable change. Another instance you may come across is if you get into your friend's car and you want to plug your phone in or charge it. If they do not have an Android phone or an iPhone 15 variant with USB-C, you're out of luck. But do I actually charge my phone with the USB-C? No, I don't. I fully embrace the MagSafe charging puck. I have one at my bedside, one at my desk, and one in my car. The only time I can see myself ever using USB-C is if I need to transfer a bulk load of video files and photos to an external drive, my MacBook, or in my first example, I need to use my phone with my drone. The screen itself is great, the bezels are smaller, it's very bright, and it's very easy to see in all lighting situations. The dynamic island is a nice addition and provides some great animations. The only issue I seem to be having with the screen is the touch responsiveness. When I'm typing away at fast speeds, it feels as if it isn't registering my types. If I type the exact same speed on my 13 Pro, it registers every key. So I'm not sure why it's doing this. Maybe I just need to slow down. There is one thing I really disliked about this screen, and that was the always on display. I turned this straight off when I noticed that it was draining my battery substantially. I've always heard about the Pro Max variants having incredible battery life, and my old 11 Pro Max was very good in this department, but I'm finding the 15 Pro Max to be on a similar par as my 13 Pro, which is a smaller phone and two years old. This may be due to the baking in period some phones have when you first get them. It takes a while for their battery to get used to how you use the phone. So I feel I can't pass a true educated comment on how well this battery life performs for at least maybe a month or two. Let's now talk about the main reason a large majority of people seem to upgrade their phones for, the camera. I will straight up say I was not blown away by the cameras. There is noticeable improvements to quality and sharpness, but it's honestly not so much that I would recommend anyone update their phone every year for. The lens still has this awful lens flare which I've had since my 13 Pro. They've had several years to fix this issue, so I'm surprised it's still prevalent on a £1,000 plus phone. I'm also a bit confused as to why Apple has decided to make it even harder for consumers to choose which model to get by adding a 5x lens on the Pro Max and omit it from the Pro model. I personally feel the Pro Max is not for everyone, mainly due to its incredibly large size. It reminds me of another Apple product that alienates a lot of people, which I'll be dropping a video on in the near future. That being said, it is nice having a 5x zoom and digital cropping or zooming on any smartphone with these smaller sensors will always look awful compared to a native lens. But the main reason I bought this phone was for the new video features, and more specifically, Apple Log. 
I wanted the best portable video camera which I could take out with me wherever I go that would not take up a lot of space or would require the use of a bag. This meant buying the 15 Pro Max. I'm working on two videos right now and they may include some shots that are outside. Call me shy, but I really don't want to be lugging around my mirrorless camera and having it pointed at my face in a crowded area. The iPhone is discreet and very capable at producing quality video footage, which in this form factor makes it the perfect camera. Not to mention, it's strangely socially acceptable to shove a phone camera in someone's face when it's our friends or family. People don't seem to bat an eye. So this makes a whole lot of sense to me. But we also need to circle back to that one important phrase. The best camera is the one you have in your hand. Yes, I could have gotten away with the 13 Pro footage, but I want to produce the best quality videos visually that I can. And this 15 Pro Max is the best at video. So I've completely ignored that saying, and I really don't blame you if you do too. The log format itself is very interesting. It's got a lot of information you can pull and manipulate color-wise, and it removes that horrible over-sharpening that Apple likes to bake into their video files. However, it always looks as if the default camera app is dropping frames like crazy when I'm filming in it. This doesn't seem to result in poor playback when I'm watching the clips though. Maybe it was because I was filming in minus three degree weather at the time, but it's a strange issue. I haven't had a huge amount of use with the Blackmagic camera app that everyone raves about. I do have it installed as you can record in Apple Log 4K 60 frames in camera, whereas the default camera app will not allow you to do this unless you connect to an external drive or SD card using an SD card reader. So if you're a filmmaker or someone who likes the best quality video to capture moments in your life, this is a very good upgrade. And talking of upgrades, we have to talk about the phone's performance. This is where being an iPhone user for many years and upgrading may seem boring to some. The performance from day-to-day -day tasks isn't huge in my experience. I can't tell if this is working faster or not because iOS runs so smoothly that even on an older phone, it looks fast. The only way you'll see improvements is in gaming and productivity apps. I'm not a huge mobile phone gamer, but I've watched enough videos on how well this performs in games like Resident Evil Village to know that this is an absolute game changing device in this regards. And when it comes to productivity, like editing photos and videos, it is faster than older models, but those phones were not slow. Smartphones are so efficient and reliable that we find even the smallest of upgrades insignificant. If this phone can handle anything I throw at it for the next few years and continue to take good photos and videos, I can't argue against the fact that this is a great and exciting product. So to conclude my impressions, it's an iPhone with a nice feel, great video features, decent enough camera, and the same great and familiar iOS software. Buy one if you want it, just don't expect a huge leap in capabilities and performance if you're upgrading from an iPhone made in, say, the last four years.